Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Mark. I'm a software developer um, based here in London, working as a contractor. Um, I also work on a bunch of open source projects, of which Ava, a Node.js test runner, is the biggest. So we're going to start this talk by asking ourselves why we write tests and which types of tests we end up writing. We'll then discuss how Ava helps you get your test done without getting in your way. And then finally, we'll, have, we'll talk briefly about Ava as an open source project and community. And yes, there will be plenty of gratuitous um, stock photos in the background, courtesy of the uh, Unsplash community. So I don't know about you, but I enjoy writing code more than testing the code. And that goes when I'm not being paid to write code. You know, it's just for fun. But, but also when I am being paid to write the code. And especially when people are paying you, there's pressures just to get stuff done. And that just gets in the way of having any tests at all. There's a fantastic blog post by Sarah May in which she proposes um, five reasons why you write tests. And this really resonated with me. So let's just go, go through those reasons. So even without proper tests, you still need to know if your code is working, right? So you can click around in UI. Maybe you can start up a node REPL and, and type some stuff just to see the outputs. That gets a little bit annoying and, and repetitive. So the best way to get confidence in your code is to write some tests for it. And then once you have tests, you can use them to make sure you didn't accidentally break your code, or if I assume you're not working alone, that you didn't break somebody else's code. In the words of Sarah May, this prevents regressions, a fancy word meaning things that used to work anymore, but don't. Your test can be a way of documenting what your code does. Um, this is one way of documenting it, maybe not the best way. But often enough, it's the only way you're ever documenting what your code is doing. And testing your code it forces you at least a little bit to design it better. Because if you can't test it, you should probably find a different approach of writing it in the first place. And then finally, tests can come in handy when you need to change your code. This is less about preventing like accidental breakage. Um, it's more about supporting you when you go about making changes. Um, you need to have tests at different levels of your code base, and that's not always you know, the case. And organizing it can be difficult, but still, you will be changing your code at some point, and then it's nice to have some tests for it. So why do we test? Because it gives us confidence that the code we write actually works, that we haven't broken anything, to communicate what the code is doing, and so that we can change the code. Still though, writing tests can be a slog. The Wikipedia article on software testing lists about 20 types of testing. Um, we're not gonna go through a boring list of 20 types, but I thought we would focus on some of the types of testing that software developers like engage with in our day to day. So mostly, we'll write unit tests, we'll take a class, or a module, or a function, and then we just test it by itself. A different level is in integration testing. So the goal here is to test how different pieces of your program work together. So don't get hung up on whether you're doing unit testing or integration testing. Like often if you have small helper functions, you might end up testing them completely just by testing something else. You, you don't have to waste time carefully unit testing this helper function. Whenever we find a bug, it's good practice to write a test that reproduces it. So then when we fix the bug, we can know it's fixed, and we can be sure it stays fixed. And this is regression testing. Destructive testing is when we cause a function to fail, and it helps ensure that the code can safely handle invalid or unexpected inputs. And functional testing involves making sure your program does what your user needs it to do. Suppose it's a form of integration testing, but you're not really testing the internals of your program. 
So for instance, if you have a web app, you could be using Nightmare to test how it's supposed to be navigated by the user and then make sure that the user ends up at the page they're supposed to end up at. So we've learned that testing matters, and we've learned about the types of testing we might encounter as we go about our day. Still though, is, is any of this actually fun? Um, I think testing is a slog, but Ava will help you through it. So Ava was started in November of 2014 by Sindor Sorhus and Kevin Mortensen. And other members of the team are Vadim Demedes, Jeroen Engels, James Tomic, Juan Soto, and myself. So we'll talk more about the project shortly, but first I want to show you how Ava helps you get your testing done with these previously discussed factors and testing types, types in mind. So Ava aims to have a small surface area, so there's less for you to remember. This is immediately apparent in its test interface. There's no BDD or TDD or an exports object. It's, there's just a test function, and you call it with a title and an implementation. So you can see that here. We import test from Ava, and then we have a very simple test, 1 plus 1 equals 2, and then we make sure that that's true. So you don't have to worry about whether you're using the test interface correctly. You just give your test a descriptive enough title, and you're done. And if you have multiple files, we'll make sure to prefix the test output with the file name. Ava has only eight types of assertions. My clicker is a bit fast today. Um, we can get away with having so few assertions because we use PowerAssert by uh, Taku Tawada, which captures the values of the JavaScript expressions you use in your tests. So, for example, example we could write um, array that index of index of zero must equal two, and we say that has to be true. So if this expression results in true, then the test passes. If it doesn't, it fails, but we'll print out what all the values are in that expression, and I'll have an example of that later. So this means you don't have to memorize like a large assertion library because you can just write JavaScript. Ava runs each test file in its own process. So this means you can safely modify the global state without accidentally affecting a different test or an unrelated test that you were not expecting to, uh, to be affecting. Um, we can also run multiple test files concurrently, each in their own process, to hopefully speed things up a bit. This also have a performance overhead, so it kind of depends how many test files you have and we're looking at defaulting to a lighter level of isolation that should still work for most practical use cases. Um, test fail. Ava will help you understand why, so you can fix your code or your test in case your code was actually correct. Um, so when assertions fail, we'll print the values received by the assertion um, and, and try to give you really detailed and readable output. So in that See the true array example I just showed you. Um, what it ends up looking like is, is this. So we run Ava, and you can sort of see, it's a bit small, but there's the line of the expression that failed, nicely in red, and then it shows you the result, it's false. Um, two is the number two, array index of returns three, zero is zero, and then at the bottom it shows you the array. So it gives you a lot of context to figure out what was actually going on in that assertion, and that hopefully helps you debug your test. We can do the same when comparing values. So this does a deep equal between two objects, and it prints a nice diff with everything that's, that's extraneous that is wrong, and then what was expected. So you, you can hopefully look at this, and then you figure out you know, where the problem is. Tests should contain assertions, and without them, what are you testing? So Ava will detect when your test completed without running any assertions and make such tests fail. So in this example, we're looping over an array, and then we're making sure every item in that array is true. But it's unclear, is getArray supposed to return an empty array, maybe? And if it does, then what are we testing? Because we're never running any assertions because the array is empty. And when we talk about having your test be documentation for your code, this, this doesn't document what getArray get is supposed to do. So we can improve this test. 
um, we can assign the array to a variable, and then we can make sure it's an actual array. So now we know hey, it's an array, and if it's empty, that's probably fine. If it has items, we can make sure they're all true. Asynchronous code um, can get stuck. So Ava will detect when the event loop in node empties while a test is still pending. So here we have a test, and maybe we have to get something from a mock database or whatever, and it's just, it's just hanging, nothing's happening. What Ava will show you when you run that test, and everything just stops running, no, there's nothing left to do, it will say, your test returned a promise, but it, it never resolved, so it's probably not working the way you're expecting it to. Ava is committed to automatically supporting uh, the stage four language features in your test files. So no matter what node version you're running, you can use um, async await or, or anything else that is now in the latest node aid. Um, or anything that the TC39 committee is going to move on to stage four soon, we'll be able to support that in Ava before we have a node version that supports it. Um, importantly though, we don't modify any built-in objects, so a string dot pat left function, like we won't be, um, you won't have that unless you know, you're in a node version that actually supports that. So when debugging, it can be uh, useful if you can sort of skip certain tests or focus on specific tests that, that you know are failing. So we have skip and only, and you can also, from the command line, match a test by its title. Um, you can sketch out tests that you still have to write. So you can use test.todo, and this will print a nice little list of tests that you're still supposed to be writing. Um, so this is a way to just leave some notes for you from when you have time to come back to that code. Um, sometimes you find a bug, but you don't have time to, or the knowledge to fix it. So with Ava, you can still write a test that fails while the bug is present, but it won't break your CI. So here's a nice contrived example for the Game of Thrones fans. You know, we're gonna assume that Daenerys' favorite animal is a dragon, but maybe whoever programmed this just thought it was a dog um, or a wolf. So we say test.failing. So we, assuming this assertion fails, then test.failing will mark that in the output of the test run, but it won't fail your, your CI build. So there's one known failure, there should be dragons. Now when you fix that bug, and you don't remove the failing modifier, then it will like fail because it's supposed to fail but no longer does, um, which is a little like inverted logic, but Basically, then your CI will be breaking, then you realize, oh, I need to make, mark this test as no longer failing. And then, there you go, you have a test case for your bug that you just fixed. Ava makes it easy to test with multiple inputs. So for instance, if you're writing a destructive test, you know, where we're throwing lots of data at a function and we're just making sure it handles everything that, is, that could go wrong. Um, so let's take a sum function, right? So we're gonna add left to the right, and they both have to be numbers, otherwise we throw a type error. So the happy path is easy to test, right? <coughs> test that is sum five comma six, and that must equal 11. But doing this for all the various inputs that are wrong gets quite annoying. So strings, null and undefined, two and true, it, it's very repetitive. So if it lets you write a macro function that you can use in multiple tests. So we can write a check inputs function, which um, has that assertion that it throws a type error. And then we just do three test calls with the values. So this is a lot easier to write um, than just copy pasting and changing some values. It's much clearer what's going on in, in this case. Ava also comes with an intelligent uh, watch mode which, return, which reruns just the right files when you edit your code. So you can just start Ava in a corner and then go about your day editing code and it will keep rerunning the tests. So Ava is an open source project which means it's not about those in the core team, like it's not about me, it's about building a fantastic test runner. 
nobody in the core team understands all of Ava. Um, you know, we're quite familiar with it, but there's different pieces and we don't have time to really study it all, and that, that's fine. Major contributions have been made by people who are not on the core team. Um, we're there to help with issues and contributions from others. So, on, on like some metrics side, we have commits from well over 100 contributors in the main repository alone. There's 15 recipes that sort of explain how to best make use of Ava, ranging from code coverage to MongoDB testing. The documentation has been translated into eight languages, from French to Chinese, by almost 30 contributors. Um, on the vanity metric side, we have we're nearing 11,000 stars on GitHub, and we have about 400,000 monthly installs across NPM and Yarn. Um, I like the GitHub stars one. It's complete nonsense. It's just a lot of people click the button. Um, it doesn't really mean it's any good. I mean, Ava's good, but um, it just, uh, just makes you feel nice when you go to a repo and see a high number. But. So our guiding principle is to be kind to everybody. So this goes for support requests, for issue reports, um, helping people land contributions. But yes, the minimum definition of kind is spelled out in our code of conduct. Contributing to an open source project can be daunting. Um, but there's many ways to make contributions. Translating documentation is immensely valuable. Um, bug reports, writing a recipe on how to use Ava, that's a great way of sharing your knowledge. We also try to label issues by how accessible they might be to new contributors. Um, you'd be surprised how much low-hanging fruit there still is in Ava. It's usually a good idea to leave a comment if you're working on an issue and to discuss beforehand if you're about to do a large amount of work. This, just kind of so we don't waste each other's time, like you might start working on something and then somebody else starts working on it and then if they finish before you do, then your work might have been for nothing. So if you just say, hey, I'm working on this, that's great, they will let you work on it. If you're going to spend a lot of time fixing some really complex issue, you might want to check ahead of, you know, in advance if, you're, if your approach is the right approach, just so you don't waste your, your valuable time on something that, that needs a lot more work. Um, Code contributions are best discussed in a pull request, and we automatically run tests across our supported Node.js versions, both on Linux and on Windows. And we make sure your code is consistent with our linter, and we're using XO by Cinder. New code should have tests. Ironically, Ava's tests are written using Node tap, um, not with Ava, so. You should expect some back and forth to make sure the code solves the problem in a good enough fashion, solves the right problem. But you know, we're, we'll, we'll help you every step of the way. You don't need to be an expert in Git. Um, we'll always, like if we need to fix something up just to land your code, we'll just do that and we'll always credit you with your contribution, you know, in the commits as well as in the release notes. So we've discussed how Ava is run as an open source project with contributors from, contributions from many people. Um, we've learned that testing matters. Um, we've learned about the types of testing we might encounter as we go about our day. Testing may be a slog, but we've seen how Ava helps you through it. So I hope you'll give Ava a shot, and I'd be over the moon if you join us. Um, you can find us on GitHub at avajs slash Ava. That's where the main repository is. Uh, we have do the occasional tweet from Ava underscore underscore JS. Um, Stack Overflow is great for asking support questions. Just tag it with Ava. Um, and we're on Gitter. So thank you very much. <laughs>